and you come back from your summer holidays if you were in a, a garden or an allotment is you find that the runner beans or French beans have produced enough to feed the street if not the more and uh, it seems an awful shame to waste them they do freeze but I'm not a great fan of defrosted vegetables and the home freezer is not really powerful enough to, uh, to freeze them quickly enough so they tend to become quite soft so what I do with mine is I make them into chutney uh, so I'll go and pick these beans and, uh, and show you what I what I make and it's very very nice and keeps for yonks and it's dead easy to do so I've come back from my holidays and I planted these just before I went away thinking when I got back they would be uh, just about right but there's more beans than I know what to do with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a chutney with them so I've got the uh, the beans, some of them have got, been eaten by slugs so I need to just sort that, sort that out but fortunately they're not too bad stringy wise. These are French beans, runner beans tend to be quite stringy and you, and you need to, uh, you need to de-string them. So you need about 700 grams of beans. It isn't an exact science, it's not like making wine or making jam, give or take. And uh, that's what 700 grams <laughs> of beans looks like. And I've topped and tailed them, and if they're, as I say, if they're runner beans you're using rather than French beans, and they're stringy, you have to take the strings out. Sometime in the past I have acquired this little thing here. It's called a beanet. I think I paid fightings for it somewhere. And it, I used it for uh, making julienne or thin strips of vegetables. And it's great for this, this job. Because you just push that, push one of those in. Grab it and pull it through the other end. And there you've got strips, which is ideal for this pickle job. So I'll continue with that and uh, put them in the in the jam pan. If you haven't got one of these little plasticky things, I think you can buy them at your local hope market plastic shop. Then you, you can just slice the beans into small thin diagonal slices. It's a bit of a faff about. And they'll do. So that's 700 grams of sliced beans. I need to boil the beans in some salted water for about 10 minutes until they're tender. So once, once they've been cooked, I just Roughly chop them up with a knife so they fit in the so they fit in the jar. Well, these are the other things you need. You need four good-sized onions, about a kilogram of onions. You need some turmeric. Some mustard powder, some corn flour. I like to put some whole grain mustard in it, just gives it that little bit of extra crunch. You don't have to put it in. 
Um, you need some dark brown sugar of some sort, demerara or whatever. I just happen to have this in the cupboard. And uh, you can add coriander, coriander if you want to taste, but uh, I'll just leave, them, leave these out. Then you need some malt vinegar. I use spiced vinegar for this green bean chutney recipe. And there it tells you how to do it. You just buy the pickling spice from the grocers. This is an old book, you don't get grocers these days. <laughs> and you just put a level teaspoon full of the mixed spice into a pint of vinegar and just boil it for 15 minutes and just strain it. Yeah, just strain it through a kitchen towel in a strainer. Dead easy to do. I just find it just gives it that extra little bit of, uh, of bite. Whereas malt vinegar on its own, I think, just tends to leave that pickle or the chutney a little bit bland. So there's a kilo of onion just roughly chopped. You can cook these with the beans, but if your beans are a bit tough, then by the time the beans are cooked, the onion is too soft. So I prefer to cook the onion separately. So I just cover them with some lightly salted water and uh, and boil them until they it's they still have a little bit of crunch. So I add my 350 grams of brown sugar, half the vinegar, which is 300 millilitres of the, in my case, spice vinegar, but malt vinegar would do. And I put it all back on the cooker and I, I bring it back up to the boil and boil for a further 10 minutes. While that's diddling away, I need a dessert or a tablespoonful. A dessert spoonful. A tablespoonful of just English yellow mustard. And a similar amount of turmeric. which gives it that sort of pickly, that yellow colour. Put a bit more in, about that much. And the same amount of corn flour, which, will, which thickens the mixture. And I need to mix all that into a nice smooth paste with cold water. It has to be cold water. You use hot water. And then the corn flour just clots. I don't want any lumps in this at all. I just need to add this to the pan 
and bring it back to the boil and boil it until it thickens. The corn flour will, uh, will thicken and then uh, I just need to add salt to taste. I like it quite salty so, <laughs> so I'll put a fair amount in but uh, you, can, you can always leave that out. So I just need to make sure that everything is mixed thoroughly in the pan. Especially the corn flour mix. I'm not sure that that's thick enough. I'll just put some, uh, some more corn flour in there later. Just let it boil for a while and see if it's just thicken anymore. It usually thickens quite quickly. And then finally you just add the, the other half of the vinegar, the other 300 millilitres of the vinegar to the mix. So that's the the final mix in the pan and it needs putting into hot jars so I've got some jars in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius and, and I'll ladle this into it. I'll probably ladle half of it in and then for the other half I'll add some coriander seeds and mix them in so I've got half with coriander and half without. I've just had a taste of it, but it does just, just taste lovely. When I added the extra 300 millilitres of spice vinegar to mix it up, I noticed that it, it wasn't thick enough. So at this point, I added another dose of turmeric, mustard, and corn flour just to thicken the mixture up. And uh, it was much, much better. So I'll add a, a couple of, a big tablespoonful of this whole grain mustard, a big heap tablespoon, to the mix. Just I think it just gives it that extra bit of crunch. You don't have to put it in. But. Similarly, if you wanted to add coriander seeds, this would be the time to put coriander seeds in. <coughs> so again, I can't emphasise how useful this this thing is for filling up jars. I've got seven pounds of green bean chutney. Again, very little effort, and it's uh, it's beautiful stuff. And of course, it's something to do with your those surplus beans, which are gradually taking over your garden. We call pickles and chutney. Uh, they're better for being kept. So this green bean chutney is better after about six weeks. <laughs> it's, it's even better if you keep it until Christmas. Which is very, very nice. <laughs> 